Um, I am here to do a panel about classic Lolita. Um, my name is Optic Sweet, and um, some of you might be like, Optic Sweet, you. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah, you might be like, Optic Sweet, what the hell are you talking about? You wear like all black. What do you mean you're doing a. You're just another one of those gods. Like, why, why are you doing a panel about a classic? Let me tell you. <laughs> Hello, I am a secret classic. Um, uh, here is um, a chart of my wardrobe. As you can see, most of it is Julie and Justine and Victorian Maiden. I feel like this qualifies me to talk about classic Lolita. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I just realized my name says Emma. I'm not going to change that. That's too what? Much no way. It's fine. Um, okay. So today I'm going to kind of go over what Classic Lolita is and also the elements that might make up Classic Lolita, as well as different trends that have occurred throughout time, um, throughout the life of Classic Lolita. Okay, so first of all, what is Classic Lolita? Um, if you're getting into fa um, Lolita fashion as like a newbie, you might hear that like, oh, there's three main t types of Lolita, which is sweet gothic and classic and recently gothic and sweet have been a little bit more popular i guess but back in the day classic did have its heyday um and i want to talk about um like that time as well as like what classic is as well now so um classic lolita tends to be a little bit more historically inspired um it might be more streamlined as well as more mature um, which is how people tend to differentiate it between um, from Sweet Lolita, which you would think like cartoony and bright and pastels and that kind of thing. But it's not always true. Like this stuff is not always true. There's a lot of things that might not be historical or streamlined or mature. Um, and there's some other ways that it could be classic. It just is a matter of styling and how it reads. Um, so first of all, let's go over the classic silhouettes. Um, something that is often said about the difference between classic Lolita and sweet Lolita is that sweet always uses um, a cupcake petticoat and classic always uses an A-line petticoat, um, which is kind of very surface level um, true, but also not necessarily again. Um, so here are some examples of different classic Lolita silhouettes. As you can see here, um, where the Mary Magdalene dress is, that is the A-line silhouette that most people will refer to when they talk about A-line. But you can see here with the Innocent World dress, um, it's more of like a puffy shape. So it's, you know, it's not like you have to necessarily like say that classic is one way or another. I've, ex um, I've shown a couple more examples of the classic silhouette, which are maybe not not necessarily as common. Um, this very cool dress has um, like this cape, so it makes like a big shape. Um, <laughs> um, and that's not necessarily something you'd expect, but because it is like historically inspired, it is it does read as classic. You can see the Julie A. Justine dress over here is more of like a high-waisted empire um, with the more column-shaped silhouette. Um, and that that silhouette was a lot more popular during, I want to say like 2015, it became like a huge thing and everyone wanted to wear like really flat dresses. Um, Victorian Maiden is also known for putting out these dresses that are like, they, or they call them mermaid skirts. Um, and a lot of people who are fans of Victorian Maiden might buy these um, for wearing around. I don't know necessarily if you would consider it classic Lolita, but also, um, I don't think it matters that much because it's really just a label if you want to wear it and wear your Lolita things with it that's totally fine as you can see in the stock photo they've like styled it with like a bonnet and they've styled it in a very classic way so you know do what you want kind of thing um there is also this other julie a justine dress which is kind of got this asymmetrical hem very very cool i love that dress it was one of my dream dresses um bustles are pretty common as well um the kind that actually like pull up um, typically you see Victorian Maiden do them. And I've got this meta dress on here. It's more of like a, just a big tent. And I think that's neat. Okay. 
So i um, going to quickly go over where to buy um, classic Lolita stuff. Um, there's a lot of things here, so I'm just going to try and go through these really quickly. Um, and I am going to switch my camera over to my other images. Okay, so um, here's some Japanese brands. The first few you might know because they are the most commonly um, referred to brands when you talk about classic. Um, so the big ones would obviously be Victorian Maiden, Innocent World, Julia A. Justine. Um, I put Meta down at the bottom over here because of um, spacing reasons, because it wouldn't fit into the other column. So that's why Meta's down there. But um, we've got a couple other ones that you might not have heard of. So as you can see here, um, I've got Victorian Maiden on the other image video, um, the other images. Um, and you can see they're like kind of more historically inspired, um, very like class, like elegant, that kind of thing. And then here we've got Instant World. They're a little bit more like a sweet classic, um, a little bit closer to like a lot of people would consider them sweet, sweet classic, but they have like still lots of, um, as you can see down at the bottom, some like uh, historically um, inspired things, but also just like more pastel-y kind of styling. Um, here's some Mary Magdalene. They're um, very, very like they're they're known for doing pretty much like one thing, um, and um, they're not they're known for kind of small sizing and making the same dresses over and over again. Um, but people like it, and it's neat. It's a very cool dress. Um, it's just that it, it's hard to for people to reasonably obtain or wear them. Um, here's Julie A. Justine. They are known for kind of just weird, wacky prints and dresses. Um, they kickstarted the painting dress trend of the 2013-14-ish like, and going past that. Um, but even like besides their um, painting dresses and their prints, they are known for like dresses with a lot, a lot of detail and like really intricate um, kind of like pin tucks and ruffles and that kind of thing. Um, and they are my favorite brand personally. Um, they make, they made a lot of like bangers back in the day that's like just solid, good shit. Um, here's Milfler's, another one of my favorites. You don't hear this one talked about as much. Um, they have a lot of corsets as well as bustle dresses. Um, kind of like they're known for these uh, blouses that are, um, like the scoop neck ones with the, the Michelin man sleeves. Um, and they also sell things like um, like bum, bum padding for your bustles to make it bigger. It's very fun. Um, Peanut Sweet Collection, kind of also on the border of sweet and classic, but they do have some very cute, fun, um, kind of like solid things that you could obviously style as classic Lolita. And also another thing is, I think I forgot to mention this, um, classic or all, all J fashion styles or all Lolita styles, um, they're not so much like, they're not extremely, you don't have to, you don't have to like stick by them all the time and say like, oh, like I am a, this kind of Lolita or a, that kind of Lolita. Um, it's not that big of a deal. So if you feel like, you know, like I'm on the border of like sweet and classic and I don't really know what to call myself, like, don't worry about it. It's fine. So some of these things, they could be sweet. They could be classic. Some of them might, might even like veer into Gothic, but also it's not that big of a deal. And if you, but if you want to read for something to read as classic, you might want to like style it in a certain way. And I guess we'll go over that. No big deal. Um, here we have some, Triple Fortune, they're known for like super OTT, like elaborate prints and like their giant bonnets, which were also a huge trend um, in like the 2015-ish time period. Um, we got Shiglet and you might be like, hey, what the hell? Shiglet's like a Gothic brand. But as you can see, they've got also lots of historical stuff that you could pair with other classic things and make it look much more classic, just depending on how you style it. Um, we have Physical Drop. This one is started by the designer of, um, the original designer for Meta. They have dresses that are 
a little bit like they're a little bit shaped like sacks, but they are comfy and they're very well made. Um, and as you can see, they've got like really fun details. Um, and they are a little, they are at least a little bit more plus size friendly as well. So that is something to note. Um, and then we get into like a bunch of indie brands and they're very fun um, and difficult to obtain because you might have to like use a shopping service, but um, I will give out the link to the slideshow because they will have all the links to all of these shops. Okay. So here we have a shop called Rosa Bianca. I'm pretty sure they like, they're, they're very small, but I really think that these dresses are neat. Um, so I, I, I think they're very pretty and I would like to get some. Um, this shop is um, Maroon Muna Stoic. I don't remember if I'm saying that right or not. And they're also, they're on the edge of like kind of Gothic and classic, but um, you know, I think that depending on like what you do with it, you can style it both ways. Um, and I think like the florals are also very like, I can read classic as well. Here is Star Shaped Dreams. They've got like this gingham like moment, which is very fun. Uh, Dreaming Drop, um, like the more tea length stuff. Uh, Fairy Witch, they are a shop that sells like not just their sh um, their own brand, but also a bunch of other different brands. Um, so I would check them out because they are really interesting. Um, and they have right now, I think they're selling like this kind of gingham me dress, which is great for like if you want to do a country look. Seraphim, they are a little bit more, I would say, mature and leans into like a not almost not a Lolita kind of vibe, but you can absolutely take these pieces and put them into a court if you'd like. Um, here's Meta. We love Meta. We stand Meta. Um, they can't do anything wrong. Uh, we love them. Also good for uh, plus size options. They have specifically dresses that they come out with that are plus size um, friendly. A Beatage, um, they also are on the cusp of gothic and classic, but they have a lot of different corsets as well as um, kind of like really fun sheer blouses as well as kind of um, Victorian style dresses that are very gunny sacks like. And here is Lady E. Witchery. Uh, I don't really know much about them, but I think that these are neat. Um, I discovered a lot of new indie brands. Well, not new to like the earth, but new to me. Um, so I've put in all these different indie brands that I thought were really cool. And I haven't done like, I don't know very much about them in terms of like their stories, but I think they're fun. This one's called Santa Rica. As you can see, it's also a little bit more like more natural KE, but you could take some of these things and style it Lolita if you'd like. This one is called Lieblich and Elegant, a um, little bit more sweet classic, um, but these silhouettes are very cool. This one is Sudorium and yeah, you know, like um, the, I feel like, I feel like I'm trying to explain like why things are classic and I feel like I probably shouldn't do that. This is taking a long time. Anyway, this is Sudorium. <laughs> And this one's called Her Hum. I think these are like neat pajamas or I don't know if they're supposed to be pajamas, but they look like they could be. And I love that. This is Moonrise Theater. Uh, very, very fun. I love this. Obviously, I love the one at like the bottom middle. That's a whole ass vibe. Melody Basket. I believe you can buy these um, at How Would You Go Hearts um, in SF. I think they carry this brand now, but this is also like kind of a Kind of like a sweet classic, maybe Otome kind of vibe. Um, this is Rosalie de Chambre um, and Hoshi Bako, which I was yelling about these guys when I found them. They are amazing. They have very, very cool um, like garments, but also the most amazing hats. Like I wouldn't shut up about them because they had a hat that was called Gentleman Cat, but the top of it was a heart and then it was like lined in velvet ribbon. I loved it. Um, and I think it looks like just very well done and very cute. We're gonna move on to some accessories. Um, this is Belle de Poupie. Poupie? I don't know, I'm not sure. Um, but they have really intricate hats and they're very cool. Um, this one is called, hold on. Oh, this is a non hat. These are a little bit more like toned down, streamlined, but um, you could easily wear them with like another, like a regimental stripe or um, like a Victorian style dress, that kind of thing. This is Angus at Demons. Um, 
They have like, I don't know, cool floral things. I like them. Uh, this is Luxmira. This is um, Minari's brand. Not necessarily like specifically classic Lolita, but you could absolutely take these things and put it on a cord. This one's called Private Square. I don't think they know what a private square is, so maybe don't tell them, but <laughs> they've got very, very cool bonnets. This is Ruby Blossom. They've got just like kind of dainty jewelry. Um, Mystic Garden. These very cool like cabochon pastel like vintage inspired with pastel colors, accessories. Um, this is Ichia, a little bit more like antique-y. Um, Chouette, their, their hats, they're all sold out, but I, they're cool. <laughs> Closet of Alice, there's more hats, more bonnets, and Kumayo Hinten, um, very, very elaborate bonnets. Could you imagine that on your head? I hope you can, because people should wear these. Um, and that is a lot of the Japanese brands. Um, we have more. Here are some, um, let's see, what am I doing here? Oh yeah, okay, we're on the Chinese brands. Um, a lot of these are Taobao brands. You might've heard of them. Um, there's a lot of Taobao brands, obviously, and I'm not going to be able to go over all of the different ones there are. Um, so I just included a couple examples here. Um, Amastasia, Surface Spell, Infanta, Le Flacon, they're very cool um, because they you can buy from the, them directly. They have like an English shop, so you don't have to like go through a shopping service or anything. They have more like vintage inspired, um, like handmade things. Um, and also I think they are stocked at Lolita Collective. And I, I really love how like delicate their stuff looks. Um, Akane and Alois, Chest Story, a lot of their stuff is a little bit more sweet, but they do put out some classic bangers from time to time. Dear Celine, I have always really loved their blouses. Um, I think those work really, really good. Um, Yolanda, Ichigo 15, Ikal de Lune, a little bit more gothic, but absolutely you could use it for classic. L Press L, I think they were known for like bonnets back in the day. I'm not sure. I don't follow Taobao brands super closely, but I remember them having like very good bonnets. Crad Lenry, um, you know, they're very well known. They put out all different kinds of styles um, and a lot of them are very like you can do them for classic miss point atelier solely vagant i'm not really sure they're an accessories brand um and i don't think they're i don't think they're on tap out but um you can find them on like instagram and try and figure out how to buy from them from there i would reach out to an ss um little dipper and then we're going to move on to korean brands um, we have leaf and they always have like very, very good prints. Baroque, Hainu Lee, who um, is obviously not currently active um, in terms of making clothing, but you can find her stuff still and they are all very cool. Cool Arcadia, which is a little bit more Gothic leaning, but they are very, very historically inspired. And I mean, I just love them. Dark Oz Kingdom, again, a little bit darker. Maribel, this one's so cute. Oh my God, look at the little apron. It's so cute. Lovey and Rose. Um, Tea Time on the Moon. They are an accessories brand. And then we've got some defunct brands, but you can still find them secondhand. Dear Margaret and Marchin D. I'm not sure. Prince and Scene. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Um, we're going to move on to Western classic Lolita brands. So we've got Belladonna. They always do like kind of, they have a lot of florals as like antique map kind of prints. Um, the Black Ribbon. Agato has a whole classic section. Um, she does all the styles, but she does have a section dedicated to classic specifically. Sweet Mildred. She makes like very comfy dresses. Um, so they're good for like wearing out and about every day. Lily of the Valley. She does a lot of like country, um, like woodland inspired, like fungi kind of stuff. Eat Me, Ink Me. She's done a lot of um, like painting dresses, but also just like very, very cool, like hand done details, like embroidery. And I love it. Violet Fane, they have like very cool prints. Um, Kanekul, they are a Russian brand that um, they have custom prints as well. They try and use um, 
sustainable fibers, um, that kind of thing. And their uh, things are very cute. Um, we have Summer Tales Boutique. They also have like more of a natural vibe. They did come out with a nostalgia collection recently, which is a little bit more old school. Moss Badger. Um, I can't ever figure out how to pronounce this one. Le Esprit de la Noblesse. <laughs> I'm not sure. They have really, really OTT, like printed ginormous um, like dresses and headdresses. Um, and they're very cool for like, if you want to make a statement. Dolby, they are um, a plus size friendly, like custom print. I think you can like actually um, like have them do a uh, your size specifically. I'm not really sure, but they, they have prints that are very, very good for classic. Chrysanthemums Concerto. They are a newly reopened shop. They were going under another name before, but they are, they put out this like really cute gingham JSK recently and also this little strawberry. Um, Morvin, they're a Russian brand and they just make kind of like one-offs, but they're all very cute and like well done. Dejmo. And then we're going to move on to accessories. This is a long lost, of long lost land. They do like kind of gothic and classic, like cabochon, um, like jewelry. Tiny passerine. They are a vendor at this event, um, so they're making some like rococo esque things, um, and they have just like very very cool elaborate um, historical inspired jewelry. Wax poetic. Um, also, like they they do like a they do wax sealed jewelry and accessories, which is neat. Um, March and Maiden, Sylvia Quaint, she has um, an Etsy shop and she's just got very cool hats. The Petite Four, um, like hats and accessories. Milk Ribbon, Teja Jamila, Teja Jamila, I'm not sure. There was like a time period where everyone wore these tights to for every classic cord ever, um, but I, cannot recommend these tights enough. They're so comfy, like so ridiculous comfy. Um, Isis Starlust, she's got a bunch of hats and headdresses. My inspiration, um, they've got the, like these um, embroidered jewelry, but also like little bags and stuff. Okay, I think that's it for going over brands. <laughs> um, we're gonna go over details now. And I'm gonna switch my camera. Hello, I'm back. What's up? Um, so here are a few things that might make a cord read more classic. Um, here are some hats that are commonly used in classic Lolita. This top one over here, um, I know like a lot of people refer to like just the smaller hats as a mini hat, but they always call it um, a canotier and that's how you can search for it. You've got the bonnets, which are different than other bonnets. Well. That's not necessarily true. So you've got like the floppy bonnets, which I think are used primarily a little bit more in the suite, but not necessarily. And then you've got the ones that Victorian Maiden and Mary Magdalene makes, which is like more of the cone shaped ones where you're like this. And then you've got the triple fortune ones or like that kind of style down at the bottom, which is like the big satellite dish. Um, and also headdresses, a lot of times it's just like a thin lace thing rather than like a big one. Um, these kind of longer wrist cuffs are used in classic a lot. I um, I don't know, maybe they make your wrists like look skinny, like I don't know. Aprons, um, good for slapping on many cords and also sometimes they have pockets. Um, purses, they tend to be like pretty normal shaped purses or they're in the shape of like a book or like a doctor bag or like that kind of thing. Um, the parasols, um, Victorian Maiden like made really good parasols, they always, they, they just, I just am fascinated by them. Um, here are some examples of shoes. Uh, classic Lolita is a really easy fashion to wear if you don't necessarily want to shop for special shoes. Um, you can usually find these just like in a regular shoe shop or if you go to like, if you go thrifting, you can buy some like, you know, vintage shoes or whatever. Uh, but if you want to buy new shoes, there are here are some brands that you can also like look at for kind of they put out like Victorian boots or um, you know Mary Janes or strappy boots that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, we got like you know Oxfords, we got like the the Fluvogs, um, 
with like a cool like kind of furniture detail um and american duchess is also known for um like the lace-up boots victorian maiden did do a pair of those as well um but they're not super easy to find um different kind of outerwear um i feel like the innocent world Bolero is very synonymous to me with like classic Lolita because a lot of people just had these and they would like put over many things. Um, and Julie Edgestein also does really cool boleros. They are a little bit more like extravagant, which is kind of weird because it's like a bolero. Um, you've got like the regular ones that kind of like with like a puff sleeve. You can also do like a capelet or um, a full coat. This one has like faux fur trim and it's a couch. Um, and the bottom one is eccentric. They do, well, they did RIP, um, like kind of more Aristo, but like you could wear it for classic, um, kind of like streamlined kind of look. Here's our different motifs and trends. Um, so florals, obviously a big one. Um, if you're going to do classic Lolita, you're going to run into a lot of florals because um, it's groundbreaking. Um, Gobelin, if you want to look like a couch, I recommend um, dressing an entirely in Gobelin outfit. Um, you want to be able to blend in with your couch as much as possible so that you can be um, the person that hides in the couch and scares people from that horror story. Country Lolita. Um, if you feel like you want to look like you're going on a picnic, um, you want to bring your little basket. Um, and here are some more examples. Uh, you know, it can range from stuff like, oh, like I'm a maiden in the meadow, like, you know, longingly munching on a baguette. Or you could also do like the Yeehaw Lolita variant of classic Lolita, like, or country Lolita. I don't, I'm not your boss. Um, stripes and tartans, uh, specifically, um, Regency stripe or regimental stripes, sorry, are super, super common, um, but also things like jacquard stripes and um, like kind of band stripes are also found as well. Um, academia kind of linked to the tartan stripe thing because those can read as academia, but either like a book printed skirt or um, just kind of generally looking like you're wearing a uniform um, and carrying a big bag that's a book. Um, here's some other examples. The first two are kind of like book print dresses. The other ones are like, I am going to school. I hope somebody notices me. Um, historical fashion. Lolita is often said to be influenced by like, you know, Rococo and Victorian fashion. And like, while that is true, also like I would like to, you know, keep in mind that Lolita is kind of anachronistic in terms of like where it tends to pull from. So you can say it's histor historically inspired, but also like just so many things mixed in together um, with no rhyme or reason, which is fun. Um, and like, it doesn't have to make sense, but also keep in mind that there are many, many time periods that are being pulled from when we say historical fashion. So yes. Um, so you can got your bustle skirts, the middle ones more of like a chemise dress. Um, We've got the um, Antoinette Fleur is really, really, that one's like, I feel like pretty synonymous with what people think of in terms of like classic Lula. Um, when I was doing, um, looking for photos, I found like, tons of images of people wearing this. Um, we've got the the Innocent World one on the right. It's a little bit more of like a, you know, Victorian like 1890s kind of vibe. Um, here's some pictures of how people might depict historical Lolita or um, in a historical way, we've got the um, chemise dresses. These were popularized. It got super popular to wear them around like 2010, as you can see from like, this is from when Candy Violet was still around and she made the dress. And then after that, many other people made the dress and she got mad about it. Oops. Um, <laughs> and then we've got this Julie Edgestein dress over here. It's a little bit more like Regency style. As you can see, this is another, um, this is a way like Antoinette Fleur was often courted, either that or like a triple fortune bonnet. 
like historical hat of some kind, this Innocent World ad from like maybe 2015 with a big bonnet, um, and then this picture from Jill Justine and Mille Fleur. Um, as you can see, it's like that one specifically is mixing a lot of different time periods. Um, and it is what it is. It's just, it's, you know, do what you want. Um, art and paintings, um, as I mentioned before, uh, there was a huge, huge painting trend in um, around like 2013 up through 2015. Um, and that started the classic Lolita OTT boom. Um, and I want to say one of the most popular dresses is this one on the very left hand side. Um, but after that, Julia Justine just kept coming out with more and more of them. But also another thing is art and paintings have depicted in, have been depicted in more ways than just like a big ass print on a dress. Sometimes it's in like frames, sometimes it's, you know, off to the side. Um, in general, like just art has been pretty prominent in classic Lolita, but when when you talk about painting dresses specifically, it it's about like these big digital print, like skirts. Um, and a lot of indie brands also do it. Um, as you can see, me, Ink Me's um, photo over here, I believe, um, like Summer Tales has done them. Um, there's like a the, uh, Lady Sloth has done painting dresses. There's, there's a good few of them. Um, here are some examples of painting ones. On the left hand side, you've got the exa example of just like paintings and frames. This is Zilly X from Tumblr, um, a classic icon. To be very honest, um, we've got some painting dresses over here. All of these are Julie A. Justine dresses because, you know, <laughs> like that's that was that was what people wore, and I think it's I really liked it. Um, religious imagery. Um, <laughs> so you might think of like the crosses that AP started putting out onto their dresses, like oh, um, like where did those come from? And you might think like Gothic Lolias specifically wear tons of religious imagery. Classic, it's depicted in similar ways, but also not quite. For example, we've got this dress that's just got Jesus face on it. Um, <laughs> I love this dress. I think it's great. Um, and I don't know, I think it's some of the stuff might be also like kind of sacrilegious, but if you're cool with that, then that's fine. Um, you know, the big cross dress that Julia Justine did as well. And this Crad Landry dress, which is, that one was really, really popular at the time when it came out too. Um, it's a little bit more unique in that it doesn't depict like overt, like, it's it's a little bit more like, um, I don't know, like Middle Ages? I'm not really sure. I, I know for sure someone like actually found the, um, the, the images that the print was taken from. Um, and I, I've always like just really loved the, Oh, yes. Um, Byzantine. Yes. Um, and also, I think Innocent World saw that like religious stuff was getting popular and they're like, we're going to make one too. And then they made this like exploding cross crotch dress, um, which I've always thought was really funny. Um, here's some ways that it can be styled. Um, when OTT Classic was also at its peak, a, a big thing that people would do was like wear a halo and they'd wear a veil and then they'd like pose like this. Um, and then this image of um, Sirius S, um, C and Myla um, with like kind of, it's not super, super obviously uh, religious, religious inspired, but I think just like the cut of, um, Kind of like a nun like dress and also like kind of a like the crosses and the kakoshnik reads kind of religious um we've got Dee mccall over here with a stained glass dress as well as charming monsters with the julie justine dress from before with the big cross on it um paired with an underskirt also really big around that time um to put underskirts under things to just make them longer um animals uh, animals are often in classic Lolita, not necessarily in the same way that it would be in Sweet. Um, I feel like the ones in Sweet are a little bit more cartoony, um, and like cutesy, and the ones in classic tend to be a little bit more like, they look more like an antique drawing, or as you can see, some of these are like gobelins, um, 
but also another thing, like another thing that can like be on the border of sweet and classic. And we have some ways of styling it. The um, image on the left hand side, um, Victorian Me, is the Julia Edistrine, um cat dress with like the cats in frames. Um, you also could get like the bag with it. It also had a bunny version. Um, and I just like them because they're like kind of sassy looking. Um, we've got Visanth and Lada. Lada was a big fucking deal, dude. Like Lada was Lada was like a everyone wanted that dress. It's I know they came out with the re-release and everyone was like, um, the blue is not exactly right. <laughs> um and we've got Mani here dressed as a bear. She's very cute and we love her. We've got Regalia. Um, something that is pretty well known about the designer of Innocent World is that she is an Anglophile. She like loves the UK, specifically England, so much. So Innocent World dresses like specifically have a ton of imagery that has like um, crowns and like the, the UK flag on it and um, you know, like just regalia stuff, but also it's a very common theme just throughout classic. Just wanted to call out the innocent world thing. Um, you know, literally there's a big ass flag on there, um, but it's fun. Also Grazia crown was another print that was super, super popular. Um, I think the teal colorway was the most sought after. It's a very great, like saturated kind of dress, um, which I think probably why it was so sought after. Um, we've also got some peppermint fox over there. Um, they are, a, I think they turned into like a stationary shop, but they were a, kind of like an Otome classic brand that operated out of Australia. OTT classic. Um, so yeah, OTT classic got really, really big in uh, like 2000, like past 2014. And people were like, oh, we can dress up this is um, after OTT Suite became a huge thing um, and people wearing OTT Suite would have like the split twin tails and like tons and tons of stuff on their head and like, you know, deco and classic saw that and they were like, why can't we also do that? So they did, but they proceeded to wear like very large things on their head um, and just big, big dresses. Um, Marlesa, who is in the first picture, is known for stacking things on her head. It's very impressive. Um, she is an icon and has, you should go look at all of her photos. They're very amazing. Um, and then we've just got some like different ways of like layering dresses so that they look a little bit more extravagant, wearing things on your head, having big dresses. Um, the Amy Chong in the last photo is wearing um, the Triple Fortune bonnet as well. This is a picture from when she was modeling for Triple Fortune at RuffleCon. So it's an entirely Triple Fortune um, outfit, but you can see it's like just kind of more, just like bigger and just more out there. Yes. Um, and mixing styles. Um, going back to what I said about how you don't have to necessarily decide on one thing or another. Um, you can wear things that are like kind of a little bit more sweet and classic or kind of a little bit more darker classic. Since I only wear black, I consider myself to like, wear just like dark classic some of the time. And again, you don't need to label it, but here's some examples of um, sweet classic as well as dark classic. Um, we have a image of chest story and also, um, which is kind of like during the underskirt trend, everyone would wear like this long, um, underskirt with like ruffles on it to make it look a little bit like just more extended. Um, and I think also it might have helped at the time. I think maybe people were like, oh, that gives it like a little bit more of a mature look. Um, so it's also like a little bit country as well because she's like got the box basket. She's going to go to picnic. Um, this image of zombie spaceship, she's wearing like a very overtly sweet dress, but she's paired it with like super, super um, historical, like inspired um items so it's some somehow it reads a little bit more mature than if you would pair it with like a big i don't know head bow or something um we've got this image of jelly she's wearing kind of like really classic in motifs with like the music and like the you know cropped bolero but it's all dark so you know dark classic eh. 
and dark ex delirium. It's also kind of like the Rococo style dress, but just in darker tones. Okay, that's it. I went a little bit fast. I am so sorry. Um, <laughs> I didn't think I was going to have that much time because I was like, oh my God, I have so many images. Um, but yeah, do you, does anyone have any questions? <laughs> if not, I'm going to like go chill out because I'm doing another panel with Emma next. <laughs> Or uh, does anyone like want to talk about their favorite classic trends? Oh, what's your question? I assume this is, this is Emma. Hi, what's your question? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did speed run. It's um, Lolita done fast. <laughs> um, having mouse problems. Um, dark classic. It, it's not necessarily like a thing in the sense of like, not everyone's being like, oh, like this is totally a style, but it's like an option for if you want to dress classic, but also work dark cl colors, you know? What is a classic trend that you want to come back? Um, I don't know. I feel like let's do OTT classic again. That was really fun. I thought it was a really fun time. Um, I really enjoyed people like, you know, being really extravagant and creative um and putting big things on their head are you are you doing th that from over there maybe <laughs> <laughs> um dark classic is a dark academia of classic Luda. yes it is i was actually thinking about how like the classic lolita styles can be kind of thought of in like the modern day what are they called like cores because you've got like cottage core which is like that's kind of like country Lolita. And then you've got like dark academia, which is kind of like, if you were darker classic. Um, oh yeah. And yes, I am Sonic or I am shadow. Gotta go fast. Yeah. Sweet classic. Um, I think a lot of people started where like they were throwing around the term sweet classic kind of at the end of the OTT suite kind of, boom because I don't know like you know fashion always has like it's like a pendulum right they do one thing and it does another thing so a lot of people were wearing sweet stuff and they're like oh like we're gonna go in a classic direction but they're still doing a lot of sweet motifs and so it's like a really fun combination what separates dark classic from gothic they look similar um yes that's a very very good question so gothic um, in the most traditional sense, Gothic Lolita tends to be, well, I suppose purist would be like, oh, Gothic Lolita is Moama and Moitier, right? But I would say if you're using Gothic motifs and like the, the religious things, but not necessarily like as ornate or a little bit more, um, the, the dresses can look a little bit more like architectural textural if you know what I mean um like it it would be styled in a way that is like you might have darker makeup and you might have things that are a little bit more like looks like they're more inspired by western goth um and classic I would say if it's dark classic you would have something that's like more obviously historically inspired but again it's like, do what you want, right? <laughs> yes, swastik. Um, okay, interesting that country is considered a subtitle of classic because I heard it described as a bastard child of sweet and classic. So weirdly enough, I was going back in like old live journal stuff because I was trying to find out like what the origins of classic were. Um, I thought I wouldn't have time to like go over like the origins. And also I don't like the 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 archives aren't amazing like it's hard to find things so um it's difficult to say like the origin of classic lolita but i did find an old live journal post that said i thought that back in the day the only types of lolita were like egl ega and country no sweet no classic and i think actually the term classic didn't really pop up until like quite a bit afterwards i want to say in between like like, I want to say 
in between 2000 and 2005. I also found like an old um, mm-hmm. style guide mm-hmm. that was from 2005 that listed classic as a substyle, but under Sweet Lolita. Um, but nowadays, I think people think of it a little bit more classic if you are doing like a um, like Victorian maiden style like picnic journey. Pure floral prints from AT. Would this still be sweet or can we consider it sweet classic? It depends on how you style it. Um, if you wear it with like, you know, more like plastic jewelry or if you wear it with um, like more candy colored like accessories, then it might read a lot more just like pure sweet. But if you do it in like more neutrals and like with more like mature um, accessories, like then it would read more as sweet classic. Um, I think that AP things work great for just like not sweet things. Um, And it really, yeah, it just really depends on how you choose to style it. Um, Yep. And yeah, I don't know if anyone has any other questions. Um, I've got 15 minutes left technically for this panel. I am so sorry I went so fast. Um. <laughs> okay, so rosettes. You wouldn't just ask me in person? I know, this feels weird. <laughs> Uh, also, I like that you just straight up didn't change the name. Um, I didn't want to. You're just going to be Emma. That's fine. Yeah. Um, Emma. Hi. Yeah. So I. Emma. Hi. Um, I wore a dress recently with rosettes on it, and I didn't know if it was sweet, and I didn't know if it was classic. And so I just have a hard time figuring out. I don't know. Like. I don't even know my question. Is it classic or because you saw the dress I wore? Yeah, the angelic pretty one. Is that classic or is it sweet? Because I can never. I mean, I'm just a sad goth. Right, but like, here's the thing: is like, I think that if you look at a dress all by itself, it's not necessarily super obvious that something is like a just one piece of like an entire outfit is like one style, right? Because, you know, a lot of the things that you would wear, um, a lot of things that you can just, like, a lot of things are, like, obviously one style. Like, obviously, you're not going to be able to, like, take sugary carnival and be like, oh, yeah, this is, like, a goth dress, right? That's not going to happen. But a lot of things that are a little bit more on the fence, and I think that, it, like, you can't necessarily call all dresses just, like, one specific style. Yeah. Yeah, I see the angelic pretty rosette dresses, and I'm like, are they sweet? Does I mean, it depend on how you style yeah, it? Yeah, it just depends it? on how you Is style it them. Classic. I don't know. I feel like berets instantly make everything classic. Yeah, berets I mean, good. Well, not necessarily because <laughs> also AP does put out like some berets, but they're like kind of more. Like, no, they, got, they got stuff on them. They got stuff on them they with the bats. Them. Yeah. Yeah. What are um, favorite colors for a classic wardrobe? Well, <laughs> I know the answer to that question. My wardrobe is entirely black. So for me, it'd be that. But typically, 100% um, black. Another thing is, like, I guess I forgot to go over like classic color palette. It tends to be um, a little bit more like you can use a lot of like jewel tones or like kind of dark navies burgundies um maroons kind of like more antique off whites um a lot of dresses are also you can do like pastels but they tend to be a little bit like less saturated than like a sweet pastel would be so it's still like light colored but just toned down a little bit um and are those all the colors i don't know much about colors (laughs) <laughs> but yeah a lot um jewel tones kind of like uh, a little bit more mature i think that um i think many people try to limit themselves to put dresses under a certain category despite it being versatile without realizing well it's kind of like a double-edged sword kind of thing i think because a lot of people i think are interested in lolita because they can easily 
choose something and fall under the category and it's like this is the way you wear it and you would be correct right so i get it um it's it's a it's a easy way to like try and get a good chord together it's like oh you just follow these directions right but if you want to think a little bit outside the box and think about how you can style things differently then you can absolutely make things you know classic or sweet or whatever you want oh yeah dusty muted tones um yeah dusty pinks and lavenders and shit navies maroons and ivory yeah it's like a it's like a america but like antique so maybe racist <laughs> yeah brown uh goblin look like a couch talk about classic makeup um yeah so i <laughs> i feel like i'm um contradicting myself here a little bit but i don't necessarily think that you can do um so there are in terms of like the difference between gothic and classic a huge thing i think would be makeup because gothic has a very very specific look when it comes to like something reading as more gothic it would be in the face right so if you do something that's a little bit more um natural um you know just like a little bit of rouge whatever blush <laughs> um it's just it's classic a little bit more um natural because you know ladies would fucking slap their faces to get blush back in the day but also if you want to do something a little bit more um like you know for this event it, it's virtual versailles so you if you want to do like a historical ro rococo thing you do like the white makeup with like just a little blush like that with a dot um, so it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be toned down, but it is often toned down. Like you don't necessarily see lots of, lots of colors on the face. Um, it looks just pretty natural. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I feel like that's, a, that's one of the main differences between if something can read classic or Gothic, it's a lot of is makeup. Um, okay. Are there any more questions? <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna go take a little break and then I'll be back uh, at in 8.15, it'd be 8.15 for us in California. I'll be back in a little bit, we're the next panel. Um, oh, oh. <laughs> do you want to talk about dots so fun fact the dots um i love the dots okay but the <laughs> dots were actually often a sign of um a lot of prostitutes would wear tons of dots because they would hide signs from uh i think it was like syphilis yeah. you like cover up your like milk makes like a dot stamp um a heart one too they, they would cover up their like wounds and shit with like a black dot so if you see imagery from like kind of the um <laughs> Uh, if you see imagery from that time where it's like illustrations and you see someone like a lady and she's got like lots of dots on her face, she is a prostitute. Oh, fun. Okay. So Nicole's going to be talking about this in her panel. Go check out her panel. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but you should definitely go and find out about the dots. I love a good dot. And, and the prostitute. <laughs> it's a beauty mark. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, yes. So, um, I'm going to go and I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Uh, goodbye. Bye. Goodbye.